Good morning. Praise the Lord. Let's go learn prayer today. Father God, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. We're so thankful and honored, Lord, we can. Thank you, Lord, for our Lord Jesus Christ, who saved us, who redeemed us, who delivered us, and, and gave us eternal, everlasting, abundant life. And God, we pray for our nation. We speak peace to our country, create and declare our nation's righteous nation, cleansed and covered by the blood of Jesus. That Jesus is Lord of the United States of America. And Lord, we think we have a minor revival sweeping across our nation around the world. And Lord, we pray for all the nation world, that every nation opens up their borders to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. That laborers are being sent forth to preach the gospel in each and every, to every, each and every country, each and every nation, and each and every person has an opportunity to hear the gospel of Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, we pray for all those missionaries out there. Thank you, Lord, they live in divine protection in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray for all the body of Christ, that each and every believer become baptized in the Holy Spirit, be taught about who they are in Christ, and going forth in this life, living in victory. And Father God, I thank you, Lord, for anointing me today, that I will say and do what you have me say and do. Thank you, Lord, for giving me utterance, Holy Ghost. Now pray, follow us, Lord, as we hear your word and hear from the Holy Ghost. We'll go forth and become doers of your word and led by the Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, if you have your Bibles, open Bibles here to Isaiah, read some divine healing scriptures. Now here in Isaiah chapter 53, now the scripture says here in, uh, in verse 4 and 5, Surely borne our griefs, that's also the word sicknesses, and carried our sorrows pains. Yet we did esteem and stricken smitten of God and afflict him. But he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the chastised our peace upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Now these, this foretells about Jesus coming in regards to our healing. Not only is he going to take our sins when he comes, and thank God he came and did this, but also he took the curse was on mankind, or God placed that upon him. Now here in, in Matthew, Matthew's going to refer to this by the Holy Spirit in Matthew chapter 8. Now the scripture says here in verse 16 and verse 17, When even was come, they brought unto him many was possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. Now verse 17, That it might fill which is spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself, took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. Now think about this, those last eight words, that himself, talk about Jesus now, himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. Now notice it says ours. It doesn't say theirs. It says our. God did this for all of mankind, past, present, and future. Now we go to 1 Peter, like going towards the book of Revelation, 1 Peter chapter 2. Now the Holy Spirit put, through Peter is going to put our healing in the past tense. Now here in 1 Peter 2, verse 24 says, Who his own self bear our sins, his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unrighteous, by whose stripes ye were healed. Now this helped me out so much, it still does, when I first heard it. That the Bible said here, by whose stripes you were healed. I guess I must have thought that if I was sick, well, I'm going to get healed. I forgot born again. I'm going to get healed someday. But this shows it's been done. And actually as a believer, we want to focus on that part. That Jesus has already done this for us. Not only took our sins on the cross, but he took our sick and diseases. And actually he took our sick and diseases before he took our sins because the Bible said, by his stripes ye were healed. Notice it's past tense. Were, past tense. Healed, that's past tense, right? So this has already been done. So we're not trying to get healed. There's no sense for us wondering why we're not healed yet. If we face some kind of affliction, no. Just begin to praise God and thank God that himself took my infirmities and bare my sicknesses and by his stripes I'm healed. And just starting with that helps us know that sickness isn't God's will for us because so often it was drilled in us that God doesn't always heal. Healing passed away. God gets glory out of people being sick. God can heal if it's his will. If you pray for healing, you should pray if it be thy will. Well, Jesus never prayed that way for someone's healing. He never told anyone that they, they're sick because they've been sinning. He didn't say, go home, get your life right, and then come back, and I'll heal you. No, that was all added. You know, people did that with guilt and condemnation. And what happened was, because the believer didn't know the Bible, didn't know they were redeemed. I mean, many of us grew up in church, they never really taught the word to us. They may have read a scripture and told a story, but not knowing what belonged to us in Christ Jesus. And every person, once they receive Jesus, needs to learn as fast as they can about what Jesus did for them through his death, burial, and resurrection. That not only were new creatures in Christ Jesus, but himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. And when a believer, a Christian, doesn't know the word, then people can tell them anything about God, and they'll just swallow it, hook, line, and sinker. But no, when, once we begin to learn what Jesus did for us, now we don't, we don't, we don't swallow that anymore. We thought, no, I'm, I, I, I refuse that in Jesus' name. Someone would say, well, you, you know, you may get what's going around. You just never know. No, I bind that in Jesus' name. I, I'm redeemed the curse of the law. Himself took my infirmities and bare my sickness. By his stripes, I'm healed. I mean, when I got born again, I, I grew up in church. I never missed church unless I was sick, which was frequent. But anyway, but I didn't even know John 3, 16. 
I was just scripturally illiterate. Didn't know you're supposed to know the Bible. Never took a Bible to church. Didn't expect to. But then when I got saved, I wanted my Bible. I wanted a Bible. I wanted to get my Bible. So I went to a Christian bookstore and bought one. And that was the beginning. And the Bible teaches, as newborn babes desire the sincere and work words you may grow thereby. When a person becomes born again, they just automatically have this hunger for God's word. They want to learn what's in the word of God. And when we start learning, we begin to realize, you know what? Uh, I was really being taken advantage of because I didn't know that Jesus did all this for me. I didn't even know. Think about Mark eleven twenty four. Do you remember the first time you heard that? The Bible is where Jesus said, therefore I send you what things are bizarre when you pray. Believe you receive them, means you have them. Your desires? You know, you, you do give this to people. And many times a religious person, to, you know, Christian religion, thinks, well, you know, God's too busy. He, he, he really didn't mean that. I mean, if you're in an emergency situation, then yeah, that you can pray. But the tr trivial things, now, nah, you know, God knows our needs better than we do. Well, that's not what the Word says. I mean, God knows what we need. He gave us Jesus. And when he gave us Jesus, he gave us all that he had. And what we want to do is focus on what Jesus did for us and what he said. And he's the one that said, therefore I send you what? Things are bizarre. When you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. How about that? Our desires. And thank God, he promised, God promised those that belong to us. And it just starts out by what, what a believer desires himself. I mean, they desire a new bicycle, a new car, a new house, whatever. Jesus promised us this. He came, we might have life, number more abundantly. Think about how God lives. Well, he, God wants his children to live as is in heaven, so on this earth. And we need to know that everything that's good, God's the one that gave it to us. And there's nothing wrong with asking God for, for desires that we have. Everybody's got different desires. You're born again. They're not going to be whacked out because your, your spirit man's perfect in Christ Jesus because the spirit of God dwells inside of each and every one of us. Now, our head may have, have some thoughts, but those weren't ours. Those the enemy brought them to us when it came to destructive thoughts or doubt and unbelief and fear and worry, anxiety and stress and, and you know, never know what God will do. That's just all stuff comes from outside, tries to format, get inside and, you know, be set up like concrete. No, we resist all that stuff. And knowing that the church needs to be told about what belongs to us in Christ Jesus. And we need a foundation of that. Knowing that Jesus took our firm as bear sick. Because most Christians, born again, spirit-filled Christians, believe that God can heal us as well. They're still thinking God's in control of this and we got to wait till he heals it. No, he's already done it. It's said here, by his stripes ye were healed. Or by whose stripes ye were healed. Not going to be when God gets ready. See, that's what we that's how we read it. That's how we heard it. And God does not get glory out of people being sick. Think how whacked out that is. So people say that about you. He put our sick and disease upon Jesus. But for hundreds of years, we've always heard in the church, God doesn't know he's healed. And we were never told God doesn't know he's saved. If we heard anything about salvation. We may, when we got born again, still had a sin consciousness, but that's going to get deleted by us taking scriptures and renewing our mind to God's word that there's no condemnation in that which in Christ Jesus. And every day of our life, we've got to work on things like that. Keeping our mind renewed to God's word. Keeping those viruses of doubt and unbelief out of our thinking. We're going to do that by rebuking them. We're going to redo that, do that by speaking God's word. And just knowing that when it comes to healing, that himself took our purpose and bear our sickness, by his stripes I'm healed. That we're not waiting on God to do it. We just continually thank God that we believe that we received our healing. And taking healing scriptures like we read there in Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, Matthew 8, 17, 1 Peter 2, 24, and quoting them to ourselves, writing them out on pieces of paper, memorizing them, reciting them to ourselves, meditating on them. It's going to help us keep ourselves fully persuaded or get ourselves fully persuaded and stay fully persuaded that healing and health belongs to us. It's not God's will that we be sick. And but people often were told that in church, that God does know he's healed, that God gets glory out people being sick. You never know what God will do. You know, if you pray for healing, you should pray if it be thy will. No, that's not the case at all. Jesus never prayed, if it be thy will, Lord, heal this person. No, he would demand them to stand in faith, to get up and act upon God's word, take up your bed and walk. According to your faith, be it unto you. Believe you, I'm able to do this? Yea, Lord, according to your faith. Then if you, what did he say? The man was at the pool of Bethesda for all that time. Rise, take up that bed and walk. And by that man just trying to do that, the healing manifested in his body. Now, you know, Jewish people had divine healing long before Jesus came. Like Exodus chapter 23. 
I'll take sickness away and miss the number of days, day, uh, nine days I'm going to fulfill. It belonged to them, but many of them were sick, like the woman there in Luke chapter 10. The how she was bowed over, and couldn't, excuse me, chapter 13, verse 10 through 16. How she was bowed over, couldn't always lift up herself. Now, she was a daughter of Abraham. She had a covenant. But apparently she wasn't taught about healing. She maybe didn't know Exodus chapter 23 or didn't know Isaiah 53. And when she got her healing, the, her, her ruler of the synagogue got all upset about this. And said, there's six days in which men don't work, and then therefore come in on the seventh day. Now, he got upset about this. And she said, thou hypocrite, do an ice the Sabbath day, loose his ox, ass, and stall, lead away to water him. And ought not this woman, being the daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound low these 18 years, be loose the bond Sabbath day? Verse 16, it was Satan that bound her for 38 years. That's who did that to her. And Jesus said she was the daughter of Abraham, and she should be loosed. And think about this. This belonged to her, healing did. And divine healing belongs to every born-again child of God. And what they, but so often, you know, like I did, I didn't know 1 Peter 2, 24 until that night I heard it, when that preacher said it, quoted part of it. I never heard that before, as far as I know. But when you don't know, you know, like God said, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. They're taken advantage of. Again, people can tell you anything they want to about God. Everybody's got an opinion about God, even people say atheists. And they'll try to conform you to their opinion about God. And then when you do start getting some promises, like 1 Peter 2, 24, in regards to healing, or 3 John, verse 2, in regards to prosperity, living in good health, oh yeah, so you really find out what's inside of somebody. You, you really don't know what's inside of somebody until you really push their buttons. And what's inside there, what they believe is, really, is going to come out. You know, they may kind of, you know, tap dance around it for a while, but sooner or later, push comes to shove. What's really inside of a person in the midst of emotions or anger or frustration, it's going to come out. And that's where you find out that's what, the, what they really believe because the buns are at the mouth speaking. And when we really find out about a person, even ourselves, what comes out. That's why as us believers, we want to put God's word in our heart. Now, how are we going to do that? Put it in our mouth. By taking God's word and doing that. Please go over here to Proverbs 4. This tells us how to do this. In Proverbs 4. Now we'll start here in verse 20. Now the scripture says here, My son, attend to my words. Incline to my sayings. Let them not, my words, let them not depart my eyes. Keep them in start. Now here's why. For their life to those who find them and health all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it flow the, flow the issues of life. Put away from forward mouth, perverse lips, but far from thee. Let the eyes look right on. In other words, right on to God's word. You know, God told the people of Israel to put that blood up on their doorpost. And he told them in Deuteronomy chapter 6, that you talk about me when you rise up, when you go to bed. And they, they would, you know, this is something that they had to remind themselves of the covenant they had with God. Well, what we do, want to do as believers is remind ourselves of the covenant we have with God, that Jesus himself took on, when it comes to healing, that Jesus himself took on from his bare sicknesses. Now, that sounds simple, and it is simple, but we'd heard so much doubt and unbelief that that got in there. So much religion, religious teaching. Try to convince us that we were unworthy and that God was too busy. No, that's not true. God, the Bible doesn't say God's too busy. It was God's idea to have all these children, and he pro provides for us. He knows when a sparrow falls. We're talking about someone who knows everything. He knows every hair of our head. I mean, you know, think of someone that you love. You ever counted every hair of their head they got? Well, that's God loves us so much, that's what he thinks. That's what he knows. So he knows everything about us. He wants us to enjoy life. He, he, he sent Jesus so we might have life now more abundantly. God did not come through Jesus Christ to make our life harder. He came manifested in this life so we could have abundant life. Peace and joy that's in our spirit. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And God wants us to enjoy life. But so often people adopted the idea, Christians, that we have to suffer for the Lord. So they have suffering mentality, victim mentality. You know, that you don't realize what I've been through. Well, are you a new creature in Christ Jesus? Are you born again? Then you start with that. That you know that you're complete. That all your sins are forgiven. Have been paid for. You're not being punished by God because you did something wrong yesterday or a long time ago. No, because God took our punishment upon, and put that upon Jesus. And we need to serve ourselves that way, that we're, we're redeemed, we're delivered because of what Jesus Christ did for us. 
that God's not withholding anything from us. God's not the withholder. He's already given us everything. We're not waiting for God to bless us. We're not waiting for God to heal us or deliver us. No, the Bible says we are healed in 1 Peter 2, 24. And in Colossians 1, 13 says we are delivered. And Galatians 3, 13 says we are redeemed the curse of the law. So we don't have to be afraid that someone's going to put a curse on us. And you got Christians have that mentality that, you know, the gener they're suffering for the generational curse their because of sins of their fathers. We've been redeemed the curse of the law. And that settles it. We're not suffering because of what our parents did. So we don't want to think, you know, that we're going to have all the ailments that our parents had. Our parents didn't know what we know. Most of them didn't know they'd been redeemed the curse of the law. That was never taught in church. You know, it was just, I, you know, just you went through services, you got through mass or church, and you got it over for the week. Then you came back again on Sunday. Maybe go Saturday night, but come back on Sunday and go through it again. And not taught about who we are in Christ Jesus. No one had a Bible. We could have found out about it, but nevertheless, who carried a Bible to church? I never took a Bible to church. I can remember one time, ushering, I saw a college girl come in. I was kind of checking her out, but I saw this college girl came in. College just started up. My church is almost on campus. And she came in, she's carrying a Bible. I thought, well, why would she bring a Bible to church? That's just for the minister or the priest. Now, I had a Bible at home, but I didn't bring it to church. Well, and no one, she's the, she's the only person I remember, not that there wasn't, but she was the only person I ever saw bring a Bible to church. And it stood out like a sore thumb, he'd say. Well, what was she, you know, looking back, she's probably one never born again. But the thing is that, you know, you didn't think about it. And, you know, if you grew up Catholic, you never read your Bible. If you grew up Protestant, you may have read it and didn't, and believe there's many interpretations of it. And that's how we treated the Bible. But we need to realize is that God's word is life to us and health to all our flesh. And Satan doesn't want us to read the Bible. How many times do you hear people say, well, every time I read the Bible, I get sleepy? <laughs> you walk. wonder who's behind that. No, Satan doesn't want us to know anything about the word of God. And if you do hear any word, he's going to come immediately and try to take it out with afflictions and persecutions, lust of this world, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, they come in and choke the word out. When a person starts believing God, they're born again now, spirit-filled, excited for Jesus, hearing God's word taught now, and they grab a hold of some scriptures or hear them taught, decide they're going to step out on them and believe God, for this is what the word says, and going to step out on that, and then they got immediately attacked by the enemy. And usually didn't he know it was from the devil. You know, when I got born again, the thought kept coming to me when I went back to where I live. Now, you're not saved. The rest of those people are, but you're not. So I had to deal with that. But I don't have any scripture to deal with it. And then I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, started speaking in tongues. And lo and behold, what happened was that the thought would come to me that, that you're just making that up. Well, I don't know any scripture about tongues. Then I heard that pastor help quote just the last part of 1 Peter 2, 24. By whose stripes you were healed. Well, I got excited about that. Before I got home, I got sick from church that night. Well, less, in less than an hour. Now, what I didn't know at the time, till later on was being, being taught God's word more, that Satan comes immediately. When you hear the word, he comes immediately to take the word out. The source of the word. In every gospel, Jesus taught this. And I wish the night that I got born again, someone would have told me, listen, Rich, when you leave tonight, the thought may come to you that you're not saved. Would it, if it does, or... This is what I want you to say. And take this and use this. You know, like Romans 10, verse 9 and 10. Or verse 13. Real, that'd be real simple. Who served the Lord shall be saved. I called tonight, I'm saved. Now, if I'd have known that verse and someone told me to do that, then I wouldn't have went through those months of guilt and condemnation that you're, and worry and fear and anxiety that you're not saved. But I went through it, you know, because I didn't know any scripture. Same with tongues. Same with healing. I just got those last six words. By his stripes, you were healed. Didn't know what stripes meant. See, the, the enemy takes advantage of our ignorance. That's why we want to learn what belongs to us. And he doesn't want to. He wants to keep us ignorant. He doesn't want us to apply God's word to our life. He doesn't want us to find out what Jesus did for us. And people will go to church all their life and never find out what Jesus did for them. I know I was doing it. Good people, love the Lord. I, I mean, love the Lord. Love the people, good people. Yet, as far as I know, didn't know anything bad about them. They were just people or people but really weren't hungry for God. If you see, sometimes church, and I'm a pastor, okay, so I can say this stuff. So sometimes church turns into a social event where people just go on to socialize. They socialize, and thank God for socializing, you know, with one another, fellowship. Hey, praise God, we all need that. 
But that it turned to be just almost like a club where people were, were taught about who we are in Christ, that we have authority. Every believer needs to be taught the authority of the believer. That they have the name of Jesus, that they're triumphing church, they're more than a conqueror, they're a king, they're a priest, they're not a defeated person going around this world just barely getting by, wondering when Jesus is going to come back, thinking about that. Because I got born again in a rapture church, they can just waiting for Jesus to come back. There was people to walk around outside, look up the sky, maybe he's coming tonight. They actually do that, you know. No, we need to occupy it. And thank God Jesus is coming back. We need to occupy it till he comes. And use our authority in Jesus' name. Go in all the world, preach the gospel, cast out devils, speaking in tongues, doing what the Great Commission Jesus told us to do. And just taking our, the word of God and applying it to our life. And if any of those ministers bless their hearts, if they, if they started teaching some word and teaching about healing and teaching about maybe, how many Baptist ministers have you ever heard their testimony who got baptized and started speaking in tongues and wanted to start teaching that to their uh, congregation? And boy, you know, some people start, you know, wonder what, I wonder about that pastor now. I wonder what, what's he talking about? He's not implying the tongues for today, is he? No. And that's what happened, you know. Like when Brother Hayes, like 18, 17 years old, you know, he got healed, he's preached. Uh, actually, it's after he got baptized in the Holy Spirit, too. He got saved, healed, and baptized in the Holy Spirit. Anyway, so he started pastoring little churches. And, and so uh, he got baptized in the Holy Spirit and started speaking in tongues. But anyway, in his church, he was pastor. There was a man that was very wealthy. Family, the, the, I guess it was probably oil money. This is Texas. So um, he, he'd heard that man say, if tongues ever comes to this church, I'm pulling my family out. Well, lo and behold, after that, Brother Hayden got baptized in the Holy Spirit and started speaking in tongues, you know. Well, he didn't say anything mention it from the pulpit about speaking in tongues. But uh, that man that had said that had went on a summer vacation to Europe, took his family, and I guess they were going like three months. And then they came back. Now, in between all that, Brother Hayden got filled with the Holy Spirit. He's passing the church. Well, uh, that family came back. You know, they don't know anything happened. And, he, and Brother Hayden hadn't told anybody it happened. So, in the congregation. So, Brother Hayden's preaching. It got done. That wealthy man was out there, in the, in the, you know, outside the church talking to some other Christian man. And said, uh, you know, our, our little minister, uh, he's changed since I've been gone. Well, the other man knew what happened. He said, oh, uh, yeah, he, he's changed. What do you mean he's changed? Well, he's, he's got more, he's more powerful. And, you know, it's, something's happened to him since I've been gone. He's much more powerful. I mean, he's always been a good preacher, but now he's so much powerful. And the man says, well, I thought I better tell him. He said, well, while you were gone, he got baptized, spirit started speaking in tongues. And he said that wealthy man paused for a while. He said it seemed like a long time. He's not too sure because he remember he he'd heard of it. If tongues ever comes this church, we're pulling out. And the man raised up his head finally and said, Well, I'll have to admit, he's got something more than he had before. And that was the answer of it. Well, you see, now people begin to see the change. And when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit and keep praying in tongues, you'll have more power. Because Jesus said, You'll receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost come upon you, that you may be witness to me. In Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and most parts of the earth. And you do. If you pray in tongues a lot, you become more bolder and more confident. And, you know, that, and the Bible promises that would happen. We get, you, the Bible says we get edified when we do it. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2 and 4. And Jews said in verse 20, we get built up on our most holy faith. And it's, it's a gift that God gave the church. And see, but many times we weren't taught that. I mean, I wasn't taught the new birth in church I grew up in, let alone all this other. And, you know, good people, I'm not bitter against them. I, sometimes I'm trying to find out where they were at so I could fellowship. In fact, one of them called me a couple of years ago. He was one of the first persons I, to, to, I told that I got saved. I, what he said, well, <laughs> I had to believe God get over that. But anyway, so you see, you know, you, we have to have that hunger. And every day we want to find out. He listen to ministers that tell us about who we are in Christ Jesus, what belongs to us in Christ Jesus. And keep ourselves built up, tanked up in God's word. So we can go forth this life, rule and reign over the circumstances that come in our life. And take authority of in Jesus' name. Jesus said, whatever we bind on earth, you're bound in heaven. There's no sense for us waiting for God to do it. He's already given us authority to do it. God turned the authority of this world over to mankind. It be at the beginning, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 28. What Jesus did is he gave us his name and defeated the devil for us. So Satan's been defeated. So what Satan's going to use is accusations and try to keep the believer to find, keep from finding out what belongs to him. 
And any time, you know, as soon as you get some revelation knowledge of God's word, to me, it was 1 Peter 2, 24. I'm going to church now that believes in them being born again, baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I thought they'd be thrilled about that and thrilled about, you know, the bio straps were healed. And th they believed in healing. They prayed for the sick. But, you know, you, you just you, sometimes God heals and sometimes he doesn't. It was a lot of times people's mentality. And when I found out about prosperity, oh, yeah, see, that, that didn't go over well either. And you got people that were personally sent to you to try to calm you down, let you know that God doesn't expect you to prosper, like there's something wrong with being prosperous. No, God wants us to prosper, and you just have to settle that issue with yourself. But if you think you're, if you wait till everybody else gets on board, and they're going to encourage you, it ain't going to happen. You want to start out yourself, keep yourself encouraged in, G in God's promises. You keep yourself motivated with God's word. You can't wait for someone else to do that. You just starts all over every day. You get back up when you get up in the morning, or whenever you get up, you get up in the morning, you get pick your Bible up, and you go right back at it. Read those promises, remind yourself what God's word says, praising God and thanking God. Speaking in tongues all day long, just keep yourself built up. Don't wait for someone to motivate you. Don't wait for everybody to encourage you. You know, because here people say, well, no one encourage me. They don't have to. Encourage yourself. Get yourself built up. Do what it takes. Have that determination. If no one else is going to do it. I'm going to do it. If no one else is going to believe in healing. I'm going to believe in healing. If no one else is going to believe in it. You know, I'm going to believe. Now, we want to believe that everybody's going to get on board. Okay. But don't wait for it. And, you know, sometimes it hurts our feelings, if you want to use that term, or I guess we could. You know, when people don't get on board, we're all excited about what we just heard some minister preach that was so liberating to us, that set us free. And then you share it with someone else that you thought they'd be on board too. Oh, no. You remember the look they give you, and they pause, and, oh, you have to go through all that, and realize, uh-oh, uh-oh, this didn't go over with that. <laughs> I can remember the uh-oh, you know, that come to me and think, okay, they're looking at one another. They don't, they're not going forth with us. I remember Keith Morris sharing about him and his wife got so thrilled. They heard Brother Copeland teach about Christ as redeemed as Christ's law, and they went and shared it with some other Christian friends, and they got the, uh-oh, <laughs> probably shouldn't have done that. Father God, we pray today. We thank the Lord Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, for our redemption and deliverance all through the Lord Jesus Christ. And I decree and declare each person is healed, delivered, and redeemed by the blood of Jesus. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Talk about Jesus. Have you received Jesus Christ, your Lord, yet? Maybe you're not sure, or maybe you know you've never done it. Well, you don't want to take that chance. You want to receive him now, because you never know when you're going to die, you know? I mean, unless God would tell you, you don't know. So let's all receive Jesus. Make sure we've received Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. If you're not sure, or you know you haven't done it, I want you to pray this prayer today to receive Jesus. More than that, God wants you to pray, because he wants you to receive his son, Jesus Christ. Here in Romans chapter 10, it tells us how to do this. In verse 9, verse 10, and verse 13. I'm going to read the scripture. I'm going to ask you to pray a prayer with me, okay? The Bible says here, that if thou shalt confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shall believe in the heart God's raised the dead, thou shalt be saved. For at the heart man believes the righteousness, with the mouth confession made salvation. Now verse 13 says, for whosoever called the name of the Lord shall be saved. So let's pray this prayer and receive Jesus Christ the Lord today. Amen? Say these words after me, mean it, and you'll receive Jesus. God, I come to you today to receive Jesus Christ my Lord. I believe in my heart, and I confess in my mouth that Jesus is the Lord. I believe Jesus crucified, took my sins on the cross, took my judgment of sin, died, was buried, and God raised him to dead. Jesus, I receive you today as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Jesus, for delivering me. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me. And thank you that your blood has cleansed me from all sins. Thank you, Jesus, that you're my Lord, and God is my Father now. Amen. You prayed that prayer. I'd like to hear from you. You can email me at jesserichministries.com. Check out our website anyway. If you got access to the Internet. Oh, also give us your email address. We'll send you out the daily devotion. If you're not getting our newsletter, you want to get our newsletter. It's sent out usually the first of the month. Subscribe to that. It's free. Your favorite price. It can be sent to your home or office or P.O. box, whatever you got. Give me your address so we can get it out to you. You can write me if you'd like to write at Jesse Rich Ministries, Post Office Box 237170, New York, New York, 10023. If you got a prayer request, hey, we got church on the phone tonight at 7 o'clock. That access code and phone number will be right here on your face, our Facebook page. Take advantage of it. Till next time, Brother Rich, mind you, keep watching and keep learning about what Jesus has done for you. And remember, Jesus is always more than enough.